I'm uh, Harman van der Ende. I live on the island of Toschelling. I'm actually a, a lecturer on the Maritime Institute, so I am a maritime officer in the Merchant Marines. Uh, now I'm a lecturer. Uh, and one of my hobbies is beekeeping. And I wanted to tell you about the uh, method of beekeeping on the island. Uh, it is not, I don't want you to say that this, it's the method. Because you're all beekeepers, I think most of you. And bees do what they want themselves. So, you know, it's not that uh, I, I say this is the method and then you are free forever. You have no swarms, you have no varroa. That's not true. Because they will find a way to cheat you uh, sometimes. And when you think you're doing well, next year everything is changed. And I heard that this morning from my colleague, beekeeper, and also in Holland, that happens. So before I say this method is 100% proof, don't believe me in that. So, uh, to Schelling, I live on an island. Uh, I'm beekeeping since 2000. I'm a little bit uh, ashamed for that because it's only 20 years. I heard uh, people from 1963 uh, for more than 40 years, but every day you learn, so, uh, so, so it doesn't matter how long you're a beekeeper. It, 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 it takes a very long time to find out, and if you think you, you know everything, you don't know anything. So, I have 30 hives. Uh, and in the winter, I have 20 more. Uh, I, we have spare hives. We, we did that in something in, in the back of our minds. But we'll, I'll, I'll come back to that later. Uh, we're all located on a Dutch island, uh, which is a, a sandy island. We don't have rocks. So it's a big sand dune. And it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it, it's about 30 kilometers uh, from, uh, from, from, the, uh, from the mainland. I will show you later. It's uh, about. 800 kilos of honey I have approximately, uh, which is about 30 kilos uh, a hive uh, per, per, per colony uh, now and about. Well, I will inform you about that a little bit more. One year it's less, sometimes it's a little more. To Schelling. To know something about uh, the Schelling, uh, it's about uh, 30 kilometers from the mainland. So. Uh, we, we, if we, we don't, uh, we, we, there's no bees coming to the island. It's not entirely true. We figured out a few years ago, but on the west side of this island, there's another island, and that's a Karnica Island. So this is a mating station for the Karnica, and on the east side, that is a mating station for the Buckfast. So we're kind of in the middle. Uh, if you look at uh, the the bees. Uh, the Carnica bees are actually bred on the west side of the other island, so I don't think there will be infestation of Carnica bees on the island on the west side. On the east side, this is a, a flatland area, and the breeding station is on the west side of the other island, so we figured it out last year that we have a bug fest infestation from that island in our island, but on a small scale, but it happens. We have a beekeeper on the east side of the island, and we figured it out with the wing checkout that there will be some buckfast on the inside. Uh, for them, of course, they have a mating station. We have to tell them. We told them already that there is also infestation the other way around. So uh, they probably, we, maybe they go also to the east side of the other island so that that infestation won't uh, have this. So, so if we are one happy uh, beekeeper family, we would have, uh, we, uh, we, we, when we don't import bees, we would have localish bees. Uh, unfortunately, that is not the case. 99% not, but it goes the right way. But uh, it's the third Wadden Island uh, in the Netherlands, 30 kilometers from the mainland, and we have 60, 675 square kilometers which is 400 square miles, probably. I'm not sure. We have forest, and we have dunes, and we have uh, agricultural land. Uh, most of the agricultural land is uh, biological, so there's not many uh, uh, use of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of poisons. And we also have uh, no uh, acres, uh, so we, have no, we only have cows. So there is no uh, land uh, with, uh, so, so it's pretty pure 
area, which is we are very happy about. So what kind of honey flow we have? We have uh, three types of honey flow. In April, we have the willow honey. The willow honey is, uh, is, is, is uh, sometimes good. Most of the times, it's, it's not that good. It doesn't, uh, uh, like this morning, my colleague told, when it's, it's, we wait for the spring and it doesn't come. And then it comes with 25 degrees nowadays. And that takes three days. And then all the willow is blossomed and uh, it's gone. So um, the last three or four or five years, we didn't have that much willow honey. So also in my method, uh, it is not very important. Sometimes I leave it uh, and I don't, um, maybe for my own two jars of honey, it will be enough. And then I say, OK, that, that's enough. So it's not the main crop I have for, uh, for, uh, for uh, uh, the honey. In July, August, we have uh, sea leavener or stettich. I don't know if you know that. It's uh, in, in the uh, area between the sea and the mainland, so it's, it's, it's uh, flooding. There will be, be, there will be seawater flooding on the, and, and uh, we call it in Holland, we call it the lamb's ear because of the leaves on the, on the bottom. They look like uh, ears of a lamb, so, so it's, it's kind of like, a, and it's, it's blossoming uh, very much so. It's a, it's a, it's a the plant who starts when there is a, a, a sand dunes, after a while, this, when, and, and there's a land uh, evolving. This is uh, the first plant. So it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it takes for a while, about 20 years. And then the, the, the land will grow more, and then it will disappear. So I don't know how long we still have it. But it will be, uh, for a few years, uh, I think the, the, the next 20 or 30 years it will stay. But some people say before 20, 30 years ago it was much more, but still we have a, a, no, a lot of uh, honey from it. So this is our main goal. And then as a, as a st the last one is the header. And the header honey, uh, uh, funny enough, the, 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 the status honey is on the east side of the island. And the header is mainly on the west side. And I'm located on the west side of the island. Uh, and by accident, I uh, discovered a few years ago that, uh, that it's possible when, you, when your hives are full with lettuce, uh, status and a sea lavender, you can afterwards use uh, the heather honey as well. So we kind of have two honey afterwards. So this, this was by accident we discovered. I will explain you later how, we, how it came. And then my Ipiris, I have the two. Actually, I have more, but I thought, you know, two pictures will be enough. <laughs> so this is my garden. Uh, it's a garden in the dunes. It's not near my house. It's, a, it's about five minutes on a bike. I have a, a small garden house. I have uh, plants, and I have my hives over there. It's uh, Dutch national hives, which is uh, it's actually, uh, I think, English size. And uh, it has a, has a history. I don't know if you know it, the Dutch, uh, they, they always had German hives, but before the Second World War, they decided to change it over. So this will be, the, this, from that on, it was the Dutch uh, size was also your size. Only the, the ears, I don't know how they call them here, but they are smaller. So I have to cut, if I buy downstairs some stuff, I have to cut it and it will fit. fit. But it, it, it's the same size. I also have uh, changed. Uh, others, and I have the Dan Blatt. So I have two types of hives. So a lot of people say uh, that you need this, the same hive. Uh, maybe it is, but I'm happy with both of them. And they have both their advantages and disadvantages. Uh, the nice thing about the Dan Blatt hive is that you only need one brood chamber. Uh, you, you only have one. If you have the national hive, you need two. Uh, if you have a, a big, uh, which is, which is also an, uh, an advantage because if you have to combine, you, you, and you, you can make it smaller. Uh, for instance, if you have the, the dant hive uh, and it is a uh, spring, uh, and you have uh, the willow honey, uh, the, 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 the supers will be too big. So 
in the springtime, the, the, the adult is actually too big for, for to collect honey because they, they, they won't hatch the, the honey and then you, know, you don't, cannot use it. So the smaller hives are, 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 be, are better. Uh, only in wintertime, and this is also a plastic one, so polystyrene, and they are uh, also uh, nice and warm in the winter. So if you look at the food consumption, they are much better. And uh, also the uh, brood uh, nest is much nicer in the, in the dadam. So, so I cannot make a decision, and I keep them both. Because you, know, you, you need sometimes you need both uh, for, for, for good reasons. So uh, actually, we have a half past the island. We have more. We have another apiary for the spare. Uh, spare colonies. We have also, and we had, we had a small apiary where we first uh, eight years ago tested without treatment. So we have a small apiary somewhere else where we tr tr didn't treat and see how it was if the, uh, if the bees uh, didn't die. Uh, so the history of beekeeping. This is uh, something, if you live on an island, there is always something going on. It's a small community. We have 4,000 inhabitants, and uh, there's, uh, we have about uh, we had about 20 beekeepers, and they are all very uh, uh, alone, so they have their own ideas. So from the 1950s to the 90s, we have a few island beekeepers, 20, and we had a professional beekeeper from the mainland who came with a big truck, took 250 hives with him, and he was collecting sea lavender honey, and that was. Actually, the small beekeepers, they, uh, they uh, allowed it. In 1983, all the beekeepers association on the island decided that this guy didn't, was not more, uh, they didn't want him anymore because of the Faroa. Because we didn't have Faroa on the island. And we said, OK, if we don't let this guy on the island. He was very sad about it. And, uh, and it, was a, it was a very hard to decision and our, the, the government decided that the island was closed from that time on. Uh, and we didn't have Feroa till 1969. 96, sorry. Then the Feroa came on the island. We don't know why. Probably uh, maybe somebody took some bees or not. We don't, we, nobody actually, there are some stories, of course. You know, this guy, you know, this guy has breakfast. So that was the guy. Or he has Garnica. You know, that, that, that's, that's how it goes. So, but we had it. So we had Faroa on the island. And then the, uh, the uh, in 2006, I have a friend. And he was, uh, he was uh, and we said, well, let's we do an experiment on the best bee on the island. Which actually sometimes I, when I wake up, I feel sorry. But if you're ignorant, you know, sometimes you do things. But you learn, like all the time. So what we did is, we did this experiment. And we, uh, we put eight hives of Kanika bees on, the, uh, on a special place. We had eight uh, hive, uh, colonies of Buckfast. And we had eight island bees on the island. And we had an experiment for two years. So till 20, uh, 2008. And this experiment should say, OK, which was the best uh, bee for the island? So with all the associ bee association of the island, we have seen and looked. Uh, every week and in winter time, what was the best on the island? So we looked at uh, uh, how uh, good to handle they were. We looked about the Faroa, we looked about the brood, we looked about swarms, about the honey flow, and we did that for two years. This was financed by the government, and uh, we said, okay, when we have finished this uh, experiment, we will. Uh, go and look uh, what is the best bee for ours. So after uh, uh, two years, we, dis we, we looked and decided that there wasn't that much of a difference. Uh, the island bees didn't do so well, but they had enough honey. Uh, but they were not good at Faroa uh, treatment. And also, they were, uh, we had this, this disease. Uh, the buck so at the end of the day, we decided to take the buckfast as, uh, as, as the best bee because it was very nice and quiet. Uh, it was a lot of honey, but it had a lot of brood, and also you had to feed it a lot. 
And then uh, after that, we had another discussion, and uh, and we and I, I, I we weren't that happy because we thought about it, and we had some problems, really, uh, probably really serious problems. And we had a, we had a lot of diseases, and a, of course, if you know that time, there was an introduction of Varroa and frost. Uh, there were so many diseases. We had the, 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 this, 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 the hives who disappeared, and no bees left. All everything, the brood was still there. Uh, there was a d disease. I think a lot of you uh, beekeepers have had that as well. Uh, we had a 40% more mortality, mor mortality in the winter, disappearing uh, empty hives. It was really bad. We had aggressive bees, which we didn't have that much, but they were really aggressive. If you would walk to the end, they still follow you uh, around, so there was not. And we had Nosema sorana, which was the Nosema special, uh, and we had some experiments on that. We, yeah, we did, uh, so, so we were like far worse than we started. So uh, then uh, the bees could not adapt to the island also we looked at the, at the brood in the winter time. The bees were, especially the buckfast, had a lot of brood, a lot of uh, sugar used. So uh, what we decided, and it was very hard, and I, actually I have to thank this guy. Uh, unfortunately he, he died, uh, Job van Praag. He was uh, the professor in Celle in Germany. That's a Dutch uh, professor. Uh, and he's he was a good friend of mine, and, uh, and I met him, and he comes to, came to the island all the time and says, you're crazy that you are throwing everything away with your bee, your black bee, or your own island bee. So we said, OK, uh, let's change our decision and, and look forward. And he was kind of forward on the discussion we have now about the bees, um, uh, local bees. He said, you know, you have your island bee that is used to everything, so why don't you start with them? And if you look at the honey flow, if you look at the, the average, both all the hives are having the same average. And maybe, uh, so, so please keep your bee. And I'm still grateful for that. So we keep the bee, only then we had this fight in our, uh, in our, uh, our, uh, our, our association because some people said, no, you chose the bug fast, and now we are going to have bug fast. So we said, no, we stay, uh, we stay like that. And we started doing our own on the island. Uh, only one or two beekeepers still had some other bees, but it's only a very small amount. So we said, OK, we, we keep that. And we, we did uh, that. And in 2019, we had an average-based. Now we have a, an average base normally to handle not aggressive bee. So in this eight or 10 years, we, we, we did, after the method I, I try to tell you later, we, we, have, we have no more mortalities. Of course, there will be uh, uh, some colonies who, who go away or they have no, not a versatile queen or something like that. They are, can uh, adapt very well to the changing ex um, uh, circumstances, especially for the island with the wind and stuff like that. And this is very important also. And this was also discovered by my friend. He said that one day, he said, there is a new, and I think that's like four or five years ago, he said, there's a new thing, VHSH, photosensitive hygiene behavior. And he says, is it OK that I come over next week? Because I want to look in your colonies. And he checked all my colonies, and at that time, they already had this. So he said, you must be a very lucky guy, because your bees, local bees, have this, 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 this VH, VSH. And he said, you have to be very happy with that. And then uh, still, the, there was a big discussion if it would help. And I'm not sure about recapping and capping, because you know I'm not this experimental guy. I try to practice beekeeping a little more, so, so, so Faro accounts, and I did that before, but uh, I, I say, okay, if there's no mortality, why should I borrow, bo bother a lot? Sometimes you look and say, okay, well, you know, how is it with the Faroas? But it's not a testing procedure or whatever. And he said, uh, this will be good. And I said, okay, now I stop treating. He said, no, you don't stop treating because you are a beekeeper and you want honey. 
she said, he said, please be careful with that. Because if you stop, and you're f maybe your colonies will survive. But if they don't get honey, because they're too small, or whatever, you know, you, you, know, you, you shouldn't do that. You should see what ha how the bees react and start only with one uh, treatment less. So I would everybody not advise after this story and think, OK, my local bee is the best bee, and it doesn't, go, it doesn't die on me. It, try it first. So just reduce the, the, the treatment and see how they react on that. And say, if that works well, you know, you can go a little more or less and less. But you need your honey, because you're, you're, you're a beekeeper. If you only want to have bees and no honey, he said, you can stop. But then, you know, then you're not a beekeeper. Yeah, you're a beekeeper, but not for, for the honey. So this is at the moment. And I don't want to say, and be, be, I, I'm very careful with this, that the bees or the queen is, is, is ferroa resistant. I don't know that. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't, I, the, only, the only thing I know, and it sounds, sounds strange, the only thing I know is that I don't have to treat anymore. So that's it. I don't know if the queen is resistant of, 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 or, or that the worker bees don't. Uh, are, it can be also my method, part of it. Or maybe the, the flowers on the island, or the, the wind, or the sea air, or whatever. I'm, I'm not, I'm not had too many people a few years ago said, I have a resistant queen. So now I found this, you know, and this is the resistant queen, and if you, and then they, they die in you. And the pharaoh comes up like, uh, so what I know is what I do. And that I don't put uh, bees on the island is one of the things. So, so, so that maybe if I go back to the, to the Netherlands and this spring I have to send uh, Roger a letter and say, okay, all my bees are dead. And I thought they, I didn't have to treat them, but they, you know, they died. So that's also why I have spare hives for, for this reason also. But at the moment, the last four or five years, we don't have any mortality. So it works, I think. Uh, big colonies, and, a, and, and we have a, a good ha honey harvest. That's actually what you want, and this morning I heard uh, my, my colleague also say you, you want big, big colonies or big, uh, uh, full colonies with a lot of brood uh, when you bring them to the status honey. That, that's actually also the method I'm using. So, I'm not a beekeeper to look in my hives. I, l I like a le uh, a little, as little inf intervention as possible. People. And when I started as a beekeeper, I would lie, open up the hive and, you know, and think, oh, it's nice. But now I have 30, sometimes 50 hives. If I start doing that, I have to quit my job. So little interventions as possible. Swarm prevention as close as possible to natural swarm, natural swarms. So I try a method that, are, uh, that look a little like a natural swarm. It doesn't mean that it's not the same, but for me, it's, it's kind of like. And this is one of the important thing also. This is also what I heard from my, my friend, the professor. No selection on the best queens. Uh, this morning also. Do it on average. And, and decide for yourself what is, so, so what, is, what is what you want. And if this is 20 kilos, and it is, one is 18, and another is, is, is 25, together it's 20 again. Uh, so so you, 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 don't, uh, you, you don't want uh, the, the best for honey, but, but also for, to handle normally. Especially in 2008, we had some bees who were really aggressive. And he said, we have to get that out. So that was one thing. And now, I have to be honest, unless the last three, four years, we don't have to select that, far, that, that anymore, because most of them are kind of handle. They're not, uh, of course, they are sometimes a little bit itchy when it's bad weather or whatever, but uh, you get some sting one or two times. But I have a friend who says, if bees wouldn't sting, everybody would have bees. So, you know, that's a good idea. So, so we'll be happy that they now and again sting. Uh, like a crazy. 
Spare queens, we need spare queens. Sometimes we need a uh, hell because we, we want to end up with the same amount of, uh, of B or, or colonies where we start with for the next year when we want hives as well. So I, I have, and we have a brood stop. So this is one thing I have to, to say, we have a brood stop. So, so this can be also part of this, this non-mortal for Faroas. We, have we stopped the Faroa uh, in our, my method? Peace, best with the abdet of the island, no import. This is the basic uh, no import. Uh, we hope we don't have import whatsoever. Uh, we have approximately 200, between uh, 180 and 200 hives. So maybe one day we can, we have to import queens for, for, for uh, the genetic. But at the moment, I think we, we, we are free. And, and if we do, we don't, we only import queens. But that is not, actually the last five, six years we didn't. So, so we didn't import anything. And the possible uh, when there is a nectar flow or uh, when there is honey crop. That's, that's one of the things. So I want to go into the, the five, as little as possible intervention in the hives. Uh, only checking the hives when necessary. So what I do in spring, I, uh, I, I click mark and clip the queens because then it's the smallest hive and it's easy to find them. And I, most of the times, the 30 hives, I can do it in two days. It's a one and a half day, uh, two afternoons, so something like that. So you, you look for the queen, and she, the, the, the hives, are, the colonies are still small, and you can, you can easily find them. Clip, uh, if you're a biological uh, uh, keeper, you can, you, it's not necessary. But if they're swarming, it's sometimes nice that you have clipped them and you can keep your old queen. So, so that's, that's the nice thing about clipping. But I can understand if people say, okay, uh, this is something you ruin your queen with, no problem. Split hives and rear a new queen. I will tell you how that works later on. And I reunite and add a honey supper so that we have two, actually what I do is I have, I have two hives or two colonies and I put them together again. So that we have, when we go in April, I have a, I start to bring them uh, to the to the status there will be big colonies. No selection, average. Can the bees be handled? That's my main goal. If that's okay, no problem. I have a lot of gravity due to breeding and cutting. I do not. I don't know if I have to say this. So if you feel offended, just forget it. But. Uh, there is a there's a truth in that if you put more different uh, types of bees together, you get some problems. So so we had that, and we had really had big problems with that. Replace the queen with a new island queen. Make sure no drones can leave. That's one thing we do. We what I do is I stop the drones from flying from my hive, which is not okay. So the queen is not that important because I can change her, but what I think important is important is that there are no drones outside because they make the mess. Sorry for the man in this. So what I do, I put uh, a queen excluder or a drone in front of my hive so that the drones cannot put in. And I put a honey supper on the bottom because it's gonna be a mess because the drones cannot leave. So, so you need some extra space uh, where the dead drones are, and, and if you open it off, you have to be careful uh, because then they go out sometimes. But my, my experience is that the drones are, are less, a lot less from this aggressive population. And then I think three or four years when I did this, uh, it solved a lot of our problems in our area. Uh, have, where we have our beekeepers. We have a good cooperation on the west side of the island. We know each other very well, and we have done this all. And in, I think, three, four years, everything kind of was solved. And it works very well. So if we have a hive which is, uh, is not very nice, then we, uh, we, we'll, we'll do this. So the drones, for, for us, is more important than the queen. So. Uh, I can tell you later about it. Half May we split just before the natural swarming. So, so I have a method that we kind of like to use. Uh, and 
It's not always working. Sometimes uh, the, the queen uh, is, is, is already uh, want to swarm because you can see there is a swarm there. But uh, I try to avoid it. Uh, and, uh, and if there is swarm, uh, they will swarm if, if, if there is uh, already swarm uh, queen eggs uh, or queen uh, are, are already in there. But I try to do it before. So the queen will be placed with a little unknown brood in the fresh book. I will tell you later. That's how I, I will explain this uh, a little later. And uh, what I want to do as well is to have new foundation inside, so I have new brood and new frames. So the new frames, so 50% of my hives will be replaced with new comb. That's one of my, uh, and that came after the diseases. Uh, in 2008, uh, people said that the disease, the, and maybe it's, it's the old combs you, you use. So I want to refresh all the combs in two years. Basically, it would be nicer to do it in one year, but our experience is very good to do it in two years, and we, we didn't have, it went much better when we did that. And what I do also is that the brood, old brood I get out, I, I, I melt, and I use it again for my own foundation again. So I never buy foundation, it took about four or five years, but I use my own, uh, I, 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 uh, I put it, in winter time, I use it. I, I'll come back to that later. Spare queens are splitting the hive rescue cells are made out. That's, that's I will explain that later. There's a queen inside. I didn't. I see, saw the picture when I saw this presentation, and I thought, oh, I see the queen. Somebody, everybody sees it. Yeah. Yeah. Over here. Yeah. On the left. So I, I saw it just when I, <laughs> I took it. But it's, it's not in a, it's, it's on the ground somewhere. So it's probably here or some, somehow. New queen, top root, I will, I will show you later. After we and I have a spare queen. So we have spare queens and spare colony will be big enough to get through the winter. Yeah, that's something we have in July when we have the spare queen, we set it up in a new hive. And in August, they will be as big, as, big enough for having a spare hive uh, in the winter time. A brood stop. That's something we, uh, if you look at the natural, uh, we have a brood stop of ferroamide after splitting the height, uh, both sides of the queen, but I will uh, I'll talk to you later. But this is one of the things, is also nice, we have a brood stop so the ferroas cannot go into the, uh, 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 into the brood anymore and they sit on the bees. About ferroas. When, in 2008, we had this, uh, we put the, the varroa, we, we checked the varroa and I, I can show you pictures where it's completely black, black with ferroas. So we had 1,500 in our hives, sometimes. This is crazy. Nowadays, I find max 20, 20 or something if I put them uh, for a week underneath 20. And it is also in wintertime, in summertime, there's, I don't see less, I don't know what your experience is, but uh, I see less and less ferroa mites on the, on the bottom, which makes me quite happy. Uh, and also the brood stop is also one of the things. We didn't try without it, so I'm not sure if, but it probably helps in, uh, in, in, in getting rid of the furrows. This is will I will explain later as well. Best possible strength when a new queen in brood, both bottom and top, have a fertile queen. So I have two uh, marked queen is removed with two frames. Oh. The best bees and brood ready for collecting nectar. That is how we do it. And I will explain you how we do it later. So here is my method. So this was my start. Hopefully we, uh, we can uh, start at my method. Uh, March, April, May, March and April. We check and clean the hive bottom. That's actually what we do. We see how much uh, dead bees are on the bottom. Uh, sometimes it's a lot, sometimes it's, a, it's, it's not a lot. Uh, we have a kind of blackish bees, so, so most of the times we have chalk brood. Uh, I had a, a, a beekeeper who had bugfast before and said, oh, chalk brood, we have to do a thing, anything about it, we have to do something about it. I never do anything about it. It will solve itself a month later. So, and I know that I talk with a lot of people who have black bees, they have chalk brood in the 
in, in the spring, which you don't have to worry about. Don't go to chemicals just yet. Just keep reduce to one brood box. Most of the times, it depends. I have in the winter time. I use two brood boxes, so I feed them, and, and sometimes I have uh, the the bottom box completely filled with uh, with frames, filled with frames. But sometimes I only have two or three just to keep them that they can go down and up because one. But I I, I also do it on one brood chamber sometimes, depending on and, and most of the time, there will be no difference in. Uh, in, uh, in, in that they come out of the winter. So for us and on the island, I have to, to be honest that it's not mere minus 20 on the island. If it's minus eight, that's probably the max temperature in the north there. Uh, we, have, we have kind of warm uh, seawater. So, 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 but my experience is that uh, I have rather have a cold winter than a rainy winter because then my bees start flying. And I rather have bees I don't see the rest of after November than I see them all the time because then they they supply a lot of sugar, and then sometimes we have we have suffer you, you have problems. So a cold winter from for me is, is is the best actually. Then they stay inside. I have to be honest also when the last years they stay inside as well. So after the experiment we had some some bees flying out and be very. Uh, uh, if you pass them, they would, uh, then they will also have diseases. So, so I think a, a happy hive is a hive which don't come outside. So, so I'm very happy with that. But we reduce it to one brood box, check for brood, close so that you know that the queen is okay, and eggs, and mark and clip the queen. That's something I do in March and April. And then. Uh, uh, what I do, I, and I, I remember it, I didn't write it down, or we put a new frame. Depending on if there is some honey flow, we put a new frame with foundation on it so that they start building new combs. Check for uh, food, if not sufficient, put an apifolna on top. Actually, I don't ever do that because uh, if I haven't, uh, if, I, if there's not enough food on this time, I was wrong in the winter time. I should have done it the, the year before. So. Normally, uh, it will be sufficient at that time. The food which was which is already still in from from uh, from last year has, has to be enough. Now this year, we had so many much hung, uh, honey that the dadant. I never ever touch uh, the brood uh, frames of the dadant. Uh, only the super. I, the, all the honey which is in this this dadant, uh, I, I keep inside. I don't. You know, some people say, okay, the outer frames you can can also extract, but I never ever do that. I only uh, extract from the super, and that's I think that is that is also uh, very good for 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 extra. They they have their own food, so it's more always a mix between sugar, water, and 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 honey, and a queen excluder, and then uh, after the start of the blossoming with Willem, we add a honey super. And on this dadant, I have to be honest, I don't get that much honey. Probably I don't use it. I, I, but on the other uh, national Dutch hives, uh, we have uh, honey if we are lucky. Sometimes it's not enough. And what we done then do, we put uh, the super on the bottom. And then uh, you can use it. They can use it yourselves. Because if you have honey which is not, not hatched, you know, you only can use it for three months, and uh, it is not good. It is more nectar. So, so I, I, we, if it's not okay and it's not hatched, we we will get rid of it. But there's always one or two uh, colonies who are big enough, and you have uh, you have, then, then it will be okay. Create an artificial swarm in June, May, and June. This is one thing. It's very uh, maybe I, I I'm not sure if you are. Uh, Familiar with this, but this is our kind of the, the the key in our method. You get a new brood box with new frames with foundation, and you remove the mark queen from the original brood box. So if you have it on one, most of the times I only have one brood box. I get the queen out and put maybe with one uh, frame of brood. It can be done without, and we put it in the empty new brood brood box with frames. 
So that is actually what I do. And place it in the center of the new brood box on a frame with open brood or a new frame. I did both, but no, most of the times I, I put open brood and with the queen. So sometimes it's easier that you have the queen over there and you put it in there, but I always pick her off because sometimes they, you think you did it and then she is still there. So I clip it, I put it in a clip and put her later in. That's most of the time easier because I want also to look, most of the times I always look on the, on the, on the other, the old box if there's uh, queen cells or something like that. So, so I keep her away from the rest. I place a food frame on the side. So two, so, so, so uh, what I have, uh, we have 10 frames, one in the middle and uh, one on this side, one food frame. So that will be, uh, there will be food for the bees inside the new box. And uh, I brush off uh, two frames of bees into the new brood box. I do that because uh, 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 only a queen. I don't trust that, so I just have a little bees inside. And, and sometimes I'm a I'm little bit, if it's, the weather is not good, because the, the trick will come later, if the weather is not good and the bees don't fly, they don't fly in the, in the bottom box again, so you have not enough bees in that, so, so most of the times it takes. But I have, you have to be careful, so don't think, okay, it's not good, I do four, because then you have a risk of swarming in a month. So it's kind of like a, a trade out between, you, you have to, to, to play with it and see. Place the new box on the original bottom board. So what I do is I put the new box with a brood and one queen only and a, lot of, a few bees on, uh, on the bottom and put a feeder on top. So I can, uh, I can feed it. We have m nice wooden feeders so that it fits, uh, uh, I don't know how, uh, you probably have it as well, they fit exactly on the, so you can put another uh, brood box on top if you like. Place a separator and put the original brood box on top. This is the separator. Probably everybody seen that one. I'm not sure. You can, there is a, there's a, there's a wiring underneath the plate. But for this uh, reason, uh, when we use it to split, I put a, this wooden plate in it so there is no connection between the, and of course the, the feeder is also in between. So y you don't have to be uh, that hard on it because the feeder will also uh, I have, uh, if you have Sagerberger hives, uh, I uh, had one mistake because the feeder of the, uh, th that one has uh, also uh, wiring, not the plastic one. So there is a contact between the upper box and the down box. So 13 days afterwards, I was checking for a queen on the top and she wasn't there because the, the, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, uh, the, the smell of the bottom brood box, they smell on the top and they are not, they don't feel they are queenless. So you have to be, you make them queenless so that they don't. So with food and blind brains, uh, place a separator and, uh, and, uh, and then you put it on, the, on top. Of course you have removed one, so you have to make the, the hive, a little colony a, a little smaller by a blind frame. I'm not sure if it's called that way, but I wrote it like that, it's, you know, the wooden frame you put extra. Okay. So uh, you can put it next to it. If you, if you don't want to hustle, you know, but you, you looked at my, uh, my uh, apiary, you saw that I have a buck fast. So I have four sides, so I need to go on up. You can do it, uh, what I did with my, sometimes if I have no, uh, if I have no space on top, I can put them next to them. That will work also. So if it's only in the, in the neighborhood, it's, it's not that. So you place them on the original box, start feeding if there's no honey flow. Uh, the super, I, I put the super on the, on the queenless uh, brood box. So uh, if the honey is, so they have some extra food as well. So, so if, the, if, if the super is not full, they can use that as, a, as honey. Now the bees. Next day, when it's nice weather, or actually, or they bees fly, the flying bees come back to the bottom hive and start rebuilding frames. This is amazing. If it works, and it works 90% of the time, they have they are like starting building new combs, and they can do it in a week. You feed them. This is, goes very fast. So you have uh, in a week or two, you have a complete full box. And what is nice, 
this queen won't go swarming because he has only eggs. So for about three or four weeks, so you know, there's also a little bit, three, four weeks, you don't have to worry about it. She is not going to swarm because she needs uh, drones, she needs uh, all the kinds of brood possible, and she doesn't have that. So she won't go swarming. You have to sometimes be careful what happened to me. If she is already wanting to swarm, sometimes you end up with nothing in the box. She just leaves with everything. She doesn't like it, she goes. So people who say she stay on the brood, it's like people sometimes, uh, normally they would, but not everybody does it. So sometimes I lose uh, uh, and they will be in a tree somewhere else. But if you are on time, the, the bottom box won't be, uh, they will stay. And you have, then you have a queenless uh, uh, colony in the top, and you have a, the old queen with building new hives or combs in the bottom. And the top hive starts producing rescue cells. After 13 days, you can break the cells. <coughs> but most of the times, it's not necessary. They do it themselves because they lost all the flying bees. And they don't want to go swarming also. But I don't guarantee that. So you can send me an email next year and say, OK, it didn't work. So they went anyway. They can. So we check all the time. So what we do, we check, and we see if there's uh, the broken. But if we see some uh, that are already uh, opened it up, or they start uh, the, the worker bees already did, did open the, 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 the queen cells, you know that, it, that the queen is all set, already inside. Sometimes when it's cold, the two weeks, you, it, it can be a little bit uh, difficult, but most of the times, actually, I always see that there will be a spare queen. If you feed them and they have enough food, they will, they will produce a new queen. And you can collect the square queens if you like. Or what we do is after 4 o'clock, <coughs> we will put them in. So after 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and we have spare queens, we open the queen cells, we just let them in, and they don't swarm anymore. They have to fight themselves. Uh, that works also. So if, you, if this is, but you, you can choose. Most of the times, we keep a, a queen spare in our pockets so that when there's another one and we don't trust the other hive, we just put it in. But you, for instance, you can do also is that you, if you have a good hive and you say, OK, I want this queen in another hive, you can, you can do it, so take the queen and, and take it with you. We do that as well. It doesn't matter. You can put it on the same day. You can also put it in different hives. They won't kill the queen, uh, the, 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 the queen on the first day. After three or three weeks, check for the, the, check for the top for closed brood. If she has closed brood, it's OK. And you have a new laying queen. Open the top bottom board for one or two days. So then the frame will be on top. So there will be contact. So you remove the uh, feeder. And you will have contact between the top hive and the bottom hive. And then you, uh, you can uh, reunite them. Uh, but first, you have uh, removed the queen, the old queen, depending on what you like. You could also keep the old queen, but then you have to look for the new queen, which is sometimes very hard because she's very, she rushes very hard. But the, 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 hive, it, uh, the colony is not that big, so you can find them. If you, if you want to, if you're used to finding queens, you can find a new queen as well. So then you can keep her as a spare. It depends what you like. We always keep the new queen and remove the old one. And we replace it in a small hive with open brood at the same size, only a, a, a little bit different. With, uh, and we put also two uh, frames of, uh, of bees with it, and we bring them away more than six kilometers so that they won't fly back. This is the other ipery I have halfway the island. So then we have spare. Otherwise, you have to kill the queen if you don't want to. Or you can, you can also. Uh, put them together and see what happens. Some people do that as well. They will sometimes be two queens for a long time. But I don't know. Reunite top and bottom and place it in a queen excluder and a honey super. super and you have a complete with brood on the bottom. With new combs, you have a big, you have a lot of bees. 
and you're ready for bringing them the way, ready for traveling. So that will be uh, most of the times so after a week or so after I reunited them. I, I like to, to check first if their queen was okay. Uh, if there's sometimes it happens, but last year it happened on one of my hives that the queen was still, they still killed the queen. And I ha but then I could replace the old one uh, very f easily. Reunite, you can do it by, uh, by newspaper or by uh, the excluder, I, I'm saying. If I put them next to it, I put a newspaper, put some holes in it, and uh, you need some, uh, I don't know if the front page will be the best, but uh, you, you know, you can put a bit in the paper. This is always works. If you do a reunited, you unite with, with a newspaper, it will work. Then we uh, start feeding spare colonies. That is, of course, the small spare colonies. And we bring away, transport the bees to the Bosplat, uh, to the nature area on the east side of the island. And they go on holiday. This is a little small joke. <laughs> they like it very much. Then they go uh, fly. And it, it's very nice. It's a little bit windy. But uh, the, the status is uh, they're very happy uh, with here. And they, they keep them, uh, I keep them for the statish honey. Uh, this year, I had only one uh, super on it, uh, and I went on holiday. I, uh, that was a mistake. I needed, I have two supers, but I did only one, and I don't know why, though that cost me a little honey. But that is how it goes. That's, you know, I, I know for sure they would have filled two this year. It was very nice weather, and the year before as well. It was very hot and dry in Holland, but with the status, it doesn't matter, because the, 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 the sea will, will also go over the flowers. In August, and uh, the hives are loaded, transport the back. This is, this is a short story, and then I, I have to be very quick. I was in 2013, I was to the United States, and I went there uh, the 1st of July, and I came back the second week of August. So I, what I told, I, I put my bees to the status before that, and I went away for five weeks. And then my colleague said, you, you have to bring them back because everything is full. So I did that. And I spoke to a guy, he said, if you do that, you can go for the header. So we put all, everything back. I, I, I uh, extracted all my, uh, my status honey, which is very f low viscosity. So you can, two days, I can do uh, 30 or 40 hives. I can get, remove all the honey. And what I did, and this year I didn't do it, I put it on, uh, uh, back on top with a green excluder, and they got me another super of uh, um, heather honey. So now it, this year, every day I do it every year, and it works all the all the time. So I have uh, a lot of things to do: extract the status honey, replace the honey super for the heather honey, and this is the heather on the island, which is also this year. It was very nice, also, uh, and we almost always have heather. And also, if there is no status, there will be heather, or the other way around. So extract. Heather honey, place a feeder and start feeding. That's for the winter. Make bee entrance smaller for mice and birds. Uh, we were talking about a hornet. Uh, I think uh, the birds are my uh, biggest enemy. If you look at winter time, the, the, they put the, the, the humble on the, on, the, on, the, on the hive, and then the bees come out and they eat them. So I think uh, under the few by bees and the hornet, uh, I'm, I'm not saying it's not a problem in the future, but in winter time, I see <laughs> more birds eating my bees than. Uh, and it's how it is. In winter time, I, uh, I, uh, I uh, rendering bee wax. I cast my own foundation. I have a foundation who can do also uh, Dutch and also the uh, Dant. And I repair frames. And uh, since uh, last two years, I measure my CI uh, index for the colonies and make a plan for next year. This year, we, uh, we discovered by accident that our bees are pretty black. So uh, we, have a, we now kind of have a program that we want them uh, a little more black. But not by importing black queens, but to look at what we have here. And this is one I made uh, the, uh, a few, uh, last week. And, uh, and I didn't know, but she is pretty black. It's only, I, I'm not talking about DNA. Uh, uh, probably some scientists will say, yeah, that's nice, your, your wings and stuff like that. But you look at the DNA. Um, I'm not, I like this, but I won't change my, 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 my breeding uh, 
uh, my breeding strategy. I mean, have, uh, I, I think the island bee is good. And if he is a little bit Carnica or Malifra, Malifra, or whatever, I mean, it doesn't have to be an obsession to have a black bee. But, you know, you can make it a little more black, but it, uh, if it doesn't, if it is not, you know, we don't mean. We, we are more proud of our own black bee, or our, 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 we would like to call her our island bee. So, breeding program, but not as strict. Uh, I want to have a, a broad genetic band, and it has to stay like that. I don't want to have sister groups. I don't want to, all the bees are okay with me, and I, 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 if I, uh, the, the bad ones, I kick off, but the, uh, the, the broad band will be stay, because it, my DNA is very important, and I want to, to, to have it broad. If you're interested and you want to read it again, there's a, it's a, this is the website from Dave Cushman, where my method is already uh, in the short, is, uh, is also on. So thank you. I made it exactly in an hour. Thank you. I'm just curious, you said you, you usually clip your queens and mark them. Well, and then you're talking about the, the hive swarming. Where do you find the queen? Do you find her on the ground? Yeah. So most of the times you find them about uh, five meters in front of your hive, and there's a little. Uh, uh, and the rest of the bees are up in a tree. No, they go back. Oh. Okay. Just, so, so if the queen doesn't go swarming, she go back. She, they go back. So, so they, you find this little hump, lump of, uh, of of bees on the ground, and you you find the queen. Uh, so, so that's why you clip the, the, the queen, so you, your swarm goes back. After that, you have to uh, open your hive and, and get rid of the queen cells, otherwise they still go. But it's more like an insurance for a few extra days.